Hello! In this short episode, we're going to take a look at some of my endeavours in looking for Final Fantasy merchandise in a recent trip to Japan, and some of the bits and bobs that I bought, some of the things that I saw, and I suppose a bit of a primer for those who are thinking of visiting and, and thrifting for secondhand stuff in Japan. But I would say equally, uh, for those that have frequented Japan before and are more experienced with thrifting for merchandise, uh, I'd also be up for some suggestions and feedback uh, for the next time I go, because as with many people who have visited Japan, uh, I loved it and I'm already trying to save my pennies to return, if not this autumn, then hopefully sometime next year. So jumping right in, uh, just to start with uh, a small aside, uh, a few people dropped me a message on YouTube and on Twitter saying how much they would love to visit Japan as well. And all I have to say to that is, yes, uh, the experience of Japan did meet and exceed my expectations. Uh, I really recommend it. And I think those common concerns that perhaps prevent people from going, uh, including myself, such as the expense um, or the safety or the language barriers, what I found was that these aren't really the issues that you might think they are. Uh, and for example, after the initial expense of booking a flight, I found that I could eat at a restaurant in Japan for less than 10 or $15, or I could buy a sushi bento box dinner uh, at a supermarket for less than $5, and so on. So I was actually amazed at how comparatively cheap, uh, particularly to the United Kingdom, that Japan actually was. Uh, with regards to safety and the language barrier, there isn't much English spoken at all in Japan, um, but Google Translate did work fine for me. Uh, when I was trying to inquire and do things. And actually, I lost my passport in my first week of being there. I, I'm not a forgetful person. It's amazing, but it's the first time I've ever done something like that. But uh, I lost my passport. I dropped it on the streets of Osaka. And I went to a police station, and I managed to have an entire conversation about who I was, where I'd been, and all of these inquiries that you might have with a police officer um, through Google Translate. And thankfully, it had been handed in at a nearby police box, um, and so communication was fine, even in those quite sort of tense scenarios. Uh, and the safety, of course, was fine as well. And I think if you are going to lose a passport or a wallet, then Japan is probably the best place to do so, because they are famously quite dutiful, uh, and handing stuff like that in, you know, they do follow the rules. So yeah, I highly recommend it, and you know, those of you that have said you really would love to go, um, if you're a gaming fan or if you're into the culture of Japan as I am, all of that sort of stuff, you know, I, I'm sure you will love it uh, and I hope you go. Uh, but moving on, uh, let's look at some Final Fantasy merchandise. Uh, and one thing that I will say as a general observation is that if you are a fan of pretty much any other Japanese franchise, whether that's Pokemon, Mario, Dragon Ball, One Piece, uh, Studio Ghibli, Dragon Quest, and even the newer anime stuff like Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, and so on, you will not struggle at all to find that sort of merchandise out there. Um, you know, literally supermarkets, bookshops, department stores, and all of the numerous anime stores around Japan, there is an abundance of that sort of merchandise, and you will not struggle to get your hands on it. However, I did find with Final Fantasy, it has a much higher degree of expense, uh, and also scarcity about it, um, particularly the older stuff. Because really, all I was sort of expecting and hoping to find was some of the old, crappy Final Fantasy VIII figures, um, and perhaps some of the newer Final Fantasy IX figures, which I know are quite expensive uh, for what they are, but I think they're really beautifully made. Uh, so I had my eye out for them as well, uh, just to see how much they were. And to that end, I didn't see anything for Final Fantasy VIII besides a squall, plushy doll, um, and I only saw one set of Final Fantasy IX figures, which I think it was Kuja and Amarant coming as a pair, and it was at the Square Enix Cafe in Tokyo, and these were well over $100, um, so that was a bit more than I really wanted to spend, uh, particularly on a character like Kuja and Amarant, because, you know, you want the protagonists more often than not. And so, really, the only Final Fantasy stuff I did find uh, consistently in terms of action figures was Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, and Final Fantasy XV, and I did see them at least one figure everywhere I went. Um, so Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, and Hiroshima 
you know, the few hours I spent shopping because I didn't spend all my time looking at action figures. Uh, but it was mainly just the remake uh, and Final Fantasy XV. Uh, so anyway, let's run through what I picked up. Um, first off, we have Final Fantasy VI. This is the original Japanese uh, version of Final Fantasy VI on the Super Nintendo. Uh, and I found this at the Super Potato Game Store in Osaka, which is a great little shop that has loads of retro consoles, uh, video games, and uh, strategy guides and stuff like that. They didn't have too much in terms of figures uh, besides, as you might expect, and as I've said, Pokemon, Mario, stuff like that. <laughs> I don't actually own a Super Nintendo, uh, but just for memorabilia purposes and to display, I, I thought this was a great title to have. Um, so yeah, uh, picked up Final Fantasy VI. I suppose it's worth pointing out it, it was less than ten dollars, uh, which again I, th I thought that was a bargain uh, for what it was, and it was the only one left in in the shop. So I thought, why not? The scarcity really got me. Um, there was loads of copies of Final Fantasy V for the SNES, uh, but there was only one of these. Um, so I thought, why not for less than a tenner? Uh, and on the note of price, uh, and I will, you know, kind of talk about price with each of these. Uh, I did find that Osaka. In general, uh, the gaming anime district in which Super Potato uh, the shop is, it was way cheaper than Akihabara, which is the gaming district in, in Tokyo. Um, there seemed to be less tourists in Osaka as well, and thus more product on the shelves. And I would say, kind of guesstimating, the Super Potato prices in Osaka were probably 20, 25, maybe a bit more percent cheaper uh, than in Tokyo. And on this note, uh, Another store that I frequented, uh, which is quite common, it was in Kyoto, Osaka, Hiroshima and Tokyo, is an anime shop called Lashing Bang. And this is a gaming store that sells used and, and new stuff. Uh, and as a further reflection on the prices, is that in the Lashing Bang in Hiroshima, I found probably the best deal uh, in terms of action figures on my trip. And I didn't end up buying them, but there was an unopened Cloud Strife and an unopened Sephiroth figure uh, in Lashing Bang, and Sephiroth was selling for 9,900 yen, which is about, it's just over $70, and Cloud was selling for 12,000 yen, which is about 90, just over $90. And while I thought this was expensive at the time, uh, because I hadn't been uh, to Tokyo yet, and that was, that was the mistake I made, I think, in terms of buying merch, uh, because I had no real understanding or barometer of what the prices were like, and I thought, oh, don't worry, I'll just find everything in Tokyo at the end of my trip. It's going to be the last place I am. So I can just load up my luggage and then go home. Uh, but actually, um, in Tokyo, I was finding figures like Tifa in a Lashin Bang store. So the same store, uh, and it was opened and used, and it was 17,000 yen, which is about $130 for a used secondhand figure, as opposed to the um, and, a, and a kind of secondary figure, I suppose, you could argue Tifa is. So compared to the protagonist Cloud Strife, who I saw in Hiroshima, who was 12,000, you know, it, it was an additional 5,000 yen uh, for a secondary character who had been used. The, the Cloud was had not been used at all. Um, so there's an idea of the markup if you're thinking about going um, to Japan. And I think Tokyo, and in particular Akihabara, way more expensive than any other sort of gaming anime shop that I went in on my trip. Uh, so let's take a look at the next one. Just... This isn't the next thing that I bought, chronologically speaking. This was, in fact, I think it was the last thing that I actually bought um, on my trip. The last place I went was Tokyo. And despite what I said as a general rule of thumb that Tokyo is more expensive, uh, I did come across some, some things that I considered to be deals. Um, this being one of them, which is the Final Fantasy VII Remake figure of Cloud Strife. Um, so there's actually two versions of, of the Cloud Strife figure. The one I saw in Hiroshima is version 2, uh, and this is version 1. Um, not too much distinguishable b between them that I can make out. I think the version 1 looks more kind of a photorealistic rendition of Cloud, whereas the version 2 looks slightly more anime almost Kingdom Hearts sort of styling of Cloud. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was great. Um, and another thing to point out, if you're going thrifting in Japan, particularly looking at figures, looking at things in general, if you're looking at used products, you will sometimes see these 
things on them. And what they do is they, if there's a defect or an issue or something like that with, with the products, they put these stickers on them. Um, so for example, some of the stuff I got had 25% off. Uh, I bought the Final Fantasy X soundtrack, which I'll get to, because there was a light scuff mark on the outer cardboard casing. You know, there wasn't even an issue with the disc or the crystal case. It, it was a light scuff. Um, so with regards to this Cloud Strife figure, I couldn't really say no to it because the cheapest I'd seen Cloud Strife in Japan at this point was 12,500 yen. Um, this one was 8,000 yen. So that's about £50 pounds, uh, British. Uh, and I think that's around $60 um, US dollars. Uh, and because I'd been around the houses looking for Final Fantasy figures and I was just like, screw it, uh, I'm just going to buy this Cloud Strife. It's the cheapest I've seen him. He's really good quality. Um, and the note that the, the seller made was that the box is opened, so he's an open figure, and there's an abrasion on his lower boot, on his like right boot. And we got the figure out of the box, and we were looking at it, and there was no discernible... You know, I could barely... I couldn't see any issue with it, and neither could the seller. And he wanted to put the price up because someone had obviously made a mistake with this figure. So... Um, he didn't in the end, so I feel like I got a bag in here because the quality is fantastic. Um, the box is as new, uh, so yeah, that was fantastic. So I managed to get a Cloud Strife um, from the remake, and and it was probably the best. I almost missed it. In fact, I was actually going around Tokyo with my friend who has been to Japan loads of times. Uh, he's from Hong Kong, and he does a lot of, you know, he loves buying like anime stuff and and things like that. And he was saying um, around the scarcity. And the prices, the reason for that, or part of the reason for that, is not only tourists, because tourists are a big big factor of it, but also professional sellers um, or professional buyers. Uh, and what people do is they go, they buy in bulk, like loads of figures, whatever they might be. They go back to their domestic country and then they sell them for, you know, um, obscene amounts of money, which is really frustrating for people like me who literally just want to have these for sentimental value and to put them up uh, in my in my place. Um, so that's the thing. But but my friend spotted it. I, I was looking around the lower shelves and he was looking on the higher shelves and it was kind of tucked away. There was a cloud strife and there was a Yuffie. Um, Yuffie was about 10,000 yen, um, but she sells new in bookshops for about 13, 14,000 yen because she is kind of a secondary character. Um, so yeah, so I think I got a great deal on Klaus Strife here. Um, really glad I got him. Uh, and just just a note on the scarcity, I, I'd seen a Sephiroth figure as well in Tokyo, which was the same as the one I saw in Hiroshima. It was brand new. Um, it was thirteen thousand yen because it had there was a sale on in that store, so loads of stuff was discounted. Uh, they had a couple of Red Thirteens, they had a couple of Yuffies, and there was one Sephiroth. And I didn't want to buy Sephiroth if I couldn't have Cloud. So I was like, forget Sephiroth. Walked down the street, found this Cloud Strife, and was like, oh, screw it, I'll go and buy Sephiroth now, even though he's more expensive than I saw him in Hiroshima. Uh, went back down the street and he'd gone. Uh, so if you see a bargain, I would suggest you grab it. Um, if you see one of these Final Fantasy remake figures for around 10,000 yen, give or take, I would say you're probably getting a good deal. Uh, providing that they have all of the things because I did see a Rufus Shinra as well um, but Rufus had a tag on him and it said some of the parts were missing like it was his weapon or one of his additional appendages or whatever you get in the box was missing so I didn't want to buy something that had items missing from it uh, and he was 10,000 yen so but if you can get a completely intact Final Fantasy 7 figure for, for 10,000 yen one of these new big ones uh, I'd say that's probably a good deal Moving on, just a few little bits that I got in a department store. Um, these are new items, so they're a bit more... Uh, I've got a little chocobo. I don't usually go for plushies, but this one is kind of knitted rather than, you know, that kind of whatever furry fabric, which I don't like. Um, so cool knitted chocobo. This was 3,000 yen, new, um, Square Enix branded. And I got this in Tokyo, uh, and there's a department store in the sky tree so where the uh, it's a tourist attraction the sky tree is this really high tower you can go up and observe tokyo um but to access that you go through a department store 
uh, and there was loads of like anime goods uh, and there was actually a section for Final Fantasy and a section for Kingdom Hearts so um, I went and had a look there wasn't there wasn't too much that I was personally interested in but I really liked the Chocobo plushie and I got some Cloud Strife pin badges as well because it was like I don't know three dollars or something so I thought why not moving on to soundtracks um, one of my favourite stores that again like Lashin Bang um, is featured throughout Japan uh, is a set of stores called Book Off uh, now someone recommended to me uh, I dropped a message in the YouTube community page saying that I was going to Japan um, asking for some pointers uh, of where I might go and find merchandise and someone mentioned to me uh, Hard Off so there's a, there's a bunch of shops called Hard Off um, and they tend to be more on the outskirts of cities and they sell loads of stuff like used electric guitars you know whatever you might want um, and he said that's also a place you can get anime merchandise action, action figures and stuff like that but because they tend to be on the outskirts of cities I didn't really have the time or the inclination to go and visit one but they do have a, a kind of I suppose a, a sister company or a subsidiary or whatever it might be called Book Off um, primarily they sell used books and video games um, but they also sell action figures and, and merchandise and stuff like that um, and they're all throughout Japan so the, the, every city I went to which I, I, I've listed them uh, had numerous book offs in them and again it's potluck most of the ones I went into had some Final Fantasy merchandise some of which I wanted some of which I didn't um, but here's a few bits that I got so first and foremost the Final Fantasy 9 first press soundtrack when I first saw this I thought it was there was only half of it here or something it looks like the the cover should have color or maybe it's missing something but actually this is quite rare it's the first press um, white edition of the Final Fantasy 9 soundtrack it cost me five dollars and yeah I've seen it go for obscene amounts of money on eBay and, and stuff like that again I've only purchased it for sentimental value um, I haven't actually opened it so I can do so now if I can find a knife so yeah as I say um, even used goods they come you know you see a whole bunch of people they kind of stand behind the tills and they're basically putting they're putting used products into these sort of cellophane packages so they do look like they're new but they are used cool um, as I think I've mentioned the quality of the used products is absolutely fantastic like uh, you know again as I say I only have the United Kingdom as a frame of reference but when you go into charity shops or secondhand shops and stuff the stuff is really sort of flimsy but in Japan they really do like look after their products um, so very cool this is all in Japanese some pictures of Uematsu a track listing in, in Japanese of course and there's really nice kind of high quality paper and yeah that's great so yeah really happy with that um, I did google this because as I said I'd never heard of it before so while I was no I think it was after I just purchased it because it looked cool but then I got back to the hotel and googled it and it comes with this so this is part of its renown is that it comes with um, the sheet music for Melodies of Life it looks like so yeah Melodies of Life uh, sheet music and I'm not sure what this is but some Armano artwork as well Cool. So it's Amano's concept art on these nice sort of, again, really nice quality paper. Um, yeah, awesome. Just shy of five dollars for the Final Fantasy IX soundtrack, and it's really nice to have something. I, I obviously I've just opened it. I was hoping that all of that stuff would be in there, and it was. So very happy with second. Probably the yeah. The only issue is that that's a bit scuffed. But can you really begrudge that? awesome okay so moving on to the next item it's the Final Fantasy Tactics soundtrack um, 
I saw this in the same store. It, literally, it was right next to the Final Fantasy IX soundtrack. Uh, again, it was about five dollars. Uh, I can't quite remember. It was about five dollars. Um, and again, really good condition. They've got it in the cellophane as they had with the Final Fantasy IX soundtrack. So I can open this up. Cool. So really nice um, cardboard outer sleeve. It's almost like that recycled cardboard sort of stuff. Um, characters on the back. Um, oh, this looks like a poster rather than a booklet. I will say as well, actually, um, I don't know if Final Fantasy Tactics is having something of a revival, but it was a, yeah, so very funky looking poster uh, with all the different job classes from Final Fantasy Tactics on it. Very nice. So yeah, I don't know if Final Fantasy Tactics is having some sort of a revival or a remaster or something coming up, but um, I did see a lot of action figures. Um, there was action figures of Ramza and Delita uh, that I saw in the Square Enix Cafe. So again, it was in the official store and they were about $70 each. Did almost buy them, uh, but they were quite small. So they didn't have that sort of sense of value, I suppose. I mean, they were really small figures. Uh, but yeah, it was cool to see some tactics stuff while I was out there. Uh, so let's have a look. So we've got a booklet in here. Nice. So the composers of tactics. Kind of famously not a um, Uematsu score, but fantastic nonetheless. And actually the track listings here are in English. And there's only two discs, so it's got one of those four disc sort of cases, but it's only two. So Great, so that's the Final Fantasy Tactics soundtrack. And next up, again, same store. Uh, this was, I think it was Osaka, a book off in Osaka. Um, got the Final Fantasy soundtracks, and then I saw this, which is, it's not the Final Fantasy VIII soundtrack proper, um, it's the Fifthos Lusek Wekos Vinosek, which, I can't remember what it means now, is it it's something to do with witches or sorceresses, right? Um, but yeah, they did this sort of abridged album that had Libari Fatale and, you know, all of those sort of key scores uh, from Final Fantasy VIII on it. Um, so I picked this up as well. Another thing I will say uh, is that you can get tax back in or tax exempt in Japan if you're a tourist and Book Off is one of the many stores that provides that. Um, so basically if you spend over 5,500 yen in a qualifying store, uh, you have to have your passport with you. Um, they basically scan your passport, they scan the receipt of the items and you get the, it's 10%, um, which you know, it's better than nothing, but yeah, you get 10% off if, if you spend a certain amount in these stores. Um, so yeah, so that was good as well. So I got a bit less than $5 for each of these CDs uh, with all the other stuff I bought. Great, so we've got the album and we've got a booklet here. No posters or any fun stuff in this one by the looks of it. Oh, okay, so the book is actually attached to the front of the case. And again, as with the others, some pictures of Uematsu. Lots of stuff in Japanese. Sakaguchi there as well. Cool. Yeah, these are really nice little booklets, you know. The, the paper quality is nice. It's almost like an art book. <laughs> and lots of pictures of Uematsu looking sombre with cigarettes. Because why not? So moving on finally with regards to soundtracks, I have the Final Fantasy X uh, OST. Again, this was discounted. It was 25% off because of these sort of light scuffs on the on the outer packaging. But, you know, I was more than happy to sort of pay that. I mean, it was still $5. This one was actually marked up pretty a bit more expensive. And this was a book-off store in Tokyo. Um, 
it wasn't in Akihabara district. And I, I, as I've mentioned before, you know, I went in the book off that's in Akihabara and everything seemed slightly more mapped up. Um, although I would say generally there was more parity in the prices in all of the book offs in the different cities than there was with shops like Lashin Bang, um, where Tokyo and Kyoto were m a bit more expensive than the Lashin Bangs that I saw elsewhere. Um, so Final Fantasy X soundtrack, this one might not have the booklet with it. So maybe I have been done here. Oh, no, the booklet is in here. So, yeah, cool. Um, less, this is kind of just standard CD quality paper, really, by the looks of it. It's not that nice arty stuff that was in the other CDs. Um, but yeah, cool. So Final Fantasy X soundtrack, really um, big fan of that. So in keeping with um, Book Off uh, and and the sort of products you can get in there, I also managed to pick up uh, a couple of strategy and Ultimania guides. Uh, I got the Final Fantasy X Ultimania Omega. Uh, I got the Final Fantasy VI, I think it's a strategy guide. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, very, very cool book. Like, there's a lot of like cool concept art and stuff like that in here as well. Um, so yeah, I picked that up, and a Final Fantasy Tactics again. I think it's a strategy guide. Um, and yeah, I picked these up in. I picked up these two in Osaka, and I picked up the Ultimania Final Fantasy X in Tokyo. Uh, and again, really kind of 350 yen which is a couple of dollars, 500 yen, again, it's a couple of dollars, and Final Fantasy X, again, 350 yen, it's a couple of dollars. Uh, again, I just wanted to have these because I really like the art. Uh, as I say, I was really holding out for a Final Fantasy VIII Ultimania Omega um, because Final Fantasy VIII is my favourite game. But, yeah, I couldn't argue with this. Final Fantasy X is in my top three. It's a beautiful book, um, so I got that as well. I did see the... And again, this is another thing to mention. Um, in thrift shops and charity shops and second-hand shops uh, in the UK, half the time these guys don't know what they're selling and everything's sort of marked up um, by the eye. So, for example, about 10 years ago, I picked up Final Fantasy VII in a charity shop in the UK for about £6. Uh, and I know now Final Fantasy VII PS1 I've seen it sell on eBay for, again, like ridiculous amounts of money. I just wanted it to have a, a second copy. What I will say is in these second-hand shops, these hobby shops, these charity shops in Japan, these guys know what they're selling. They know what the value is. Um, so, for example, that's why a character like Cloud Strife will always have at least, you know, 15 20% markup as opposed to other Final Fantasy VII character figures that you might find. Um, so yeah, uh, so on that note, uh, I found the Final Fantasy X Ultimania, but I also found the Final Fantasy IX Ultimania. And the Final Fantasy IX Ultimania was about... It was probably the, the cost of all of these combined. So it was still not expensive. It, it was kind of seven, eight pounds, eight dollars, whatever, um, for that book alone. But again, they'd marked up Final Fantasy IX much more than they had Final Fantasy X. Uh, and I didn't find any, any Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy VIII. So I think kind of scarcity plus they know what they're selling. It's it's they're, they're much more discerning. Um, the quality is better, but also you know the, the you know what you want is often reflected in the price, or the fact that you can't find it at all. Um, so yeah, so that's the books that I got. Coming on finally to uh, the last figure that I got, which is Sephiroth. Um, this is not the remake Sephiroth. This is like an OG, original Final Fantasy VII Sephiroth. Um, but I have noticed, I thought that maybe this was like a uh, Final Fantasy VII proper error, but it's not because you can clearly see Square Enix products. So it's after Squaresoft sort of merged with Enix. Um, it's a Play Arts action figure, uh, Sephiroth number seven. And the date on it is 2005. So. I think maybe this just precedes the Final Fantasy VII Advent Children movie. Um, it may date back. Sorry, it may date back to that. Uh, again, there's a little note on here from the seller 
that says um, seal broken. So as I say, this is like fantastic quality. I don't actually want to take it out of the cellophane because the quality is really good. Um, everything's in there. It just says that the box came to them unsealed, so they sold it for a knockdown price. Uh, and this Sephiroth figure was 3,000 yen, which American is about just over $20, um, so just shy of that. And as I say, I was sort of happy to pay that because by this point, I hadn't bought the Sephiroth figure in Hiroshima and I'd missed this bloody Sephiroth figure in um, Tokyo. Uh, so I found this and again, I kind of went, we were shopping just for clothes and stuff and then there was a K-Books. So this, I bought this from K-Books, which is another sort of franchise of shops that you can buy sort of anime and gaming stuff. Um, and I was looking around, there was a couple of Kingdom Hearts characters. Uh, there was a Sora, which again was double the price of this. Weirdly, I don't know. It was opened as well, but there was a there was a uh, a Sora figure. There was Cloud Strife on the motorbike um, statue, which again over double the price of this. Uh, and there was a couple of other Final Fantasy related bits. I did actually get a I got a twentieth twenty fifth anniversary coaster, which is the you can't see it very well. It's a um, Vincent Valentine Dirge of Cerberus concept art. Um, so I picked up that as well, just because again it was like a couple of dollars. Um, but yeah, so this was the best deal I saw, OG Sephiroth, really good quality, um, and I wanted to have a Sephiroth by the end of my trip, simply because I didn't get one first time round. Um, but yeah, so that's the extent of the stuff I got, I think. In terms of Final Fantasy merch, I bought loads of, like, you know, Kabuki masks and, like, crazy Shinto good luck charms and stuff like that you know I, I love that sort of thing but in terms of Final Fantasy merch uh, this is what I picked up I think it's a good good haul for my first go uh, and I will sort of go back to Japan keep fre frequenting maybe one day I will manage to get some Final Fantasy 8 stuff uh, fantastic sort of side quest if you like for my my first real trip to Japan um, I highly recommend it I hope that was interesting and potentially helpful for you if you're planning on going to Japan merchandise it's there it depends how much time you want to commit going to look for it because again i was sparing a few hours per city that i was in to really sort of fish about um but it wasn't the priority of my trip of course i was in japan i wanted to sort of experience it but yeah uh, in terms of savings you know if you buy from the square eu store or the square usa store compared to buying new in japan you are probably spending an extra 30 40 50 dollars i i was surprised at how much i wasn't saving in japan i think before i went there was this reputation partic particularly around the akihabara district that wow you can walk in there and you can pick up all this cool stuff for like under 10 dollars or whatever it might be that's kind of nonsense and i think maybe that might have been the case like 15 20 years ago in akihabara when you could go in and pick up like a a sega dreamcast for 10 dollars or something or Final Fantasy 7, 8 figures for, for $10. But it's Akihabara in and of itself now is a tourist attraction. I went there and it was as busy and as packed with tourists as going to visit, you know, um, the Sky Tree in Tokyo or, you know, the main Shinto shrines in the Imperial Palace in Kyoto, for example. I think the prices are reflected, um, you know, by the fact that the tourist interest is there. Uh, and so if you are committing to, to sort of looking for merchandise, uh, maybe look at other cities as well. Maybe look further afield than Akihabara. Uh, so for example, the Sephiroth figure that I got for 3,000 yen, it was, it was way up north in Tokyo, um, so miles away from Akihabara district, and it was 3,000 yen. Uh, I feel like if I'd seen that in Akihabara proper, maybe it would have been about five 6,000. Uh, in certain stores so there's a few pointers um, again I'd love some feedback and I'd love some sort of suggestions of your own if you do frequent Japan and you have any sort of suggestions for places to buy um, one thing I did actually look at while I was out there was online stores that were based in Japan uh, and I was thinking well and I did see some really good deals on them as well I almost ordered some Final Fantasy figures to my hotel in Japan the only problem is is I didn't stay anywhere longer than like three days so 
you know the the fear was I order these things and they don't show up until after I've left Japan or whatever it might be. Uh, but if you are staying put or you have friends in Japan, uh, where you could almost order goods to their house or to the hotel before you arrive or something like that, uh, if you're really kind of looking for this stuff, then that's a potential route for you as well, um, and something I might look into prior to my next visit. Um, but there we go, some thrifting adventures for Final Fantasy merch. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, please feel free to drop a comment below, uh, and if you haven't already, please consider sharing, subscribing, uh, to keep updated with my latest posts. 